that's fish oil on the water and as we come round to this bay here there's a really strong smell it's pretty powerful it's just hard to describe it's not kind of really fishy but it's just a horrible stench oh i know what it is if you stuck your head in um, a jar of fish food flakes <laughs> that's the smell times 10. <laughs> I'm Barry. I'm Anne Chef. This is the continuing journey of Sailing ABC. We're doing our usual thing of uh, checking out the local Don and Durham's. Uh, we spotted this place and we thought we'd give it a shout. So, uh, Don and Durham's, gonna check them out. Give you a score out of 10. The service was great, the price was fantastic. Uh, it's it like tasty. Nine Aussie dollars full of fillers. Um, Taste-wise, on a scale of 1 to 10, uh, I'd probably give it a... Uh, 8? No! Um, <laughs> look, if we're, if we're holding cash as the 10 out of 10, I'm going to give that for taste, I'm going to give that one uh, a 6 out of 10. Oh, harsh. Yeah. This is so pretty. You've got to see it. <laughs> so the back streets of um, Yalakabak are littered with little shops and places where you can sit down to eat really very nice so just another question of getting off your boat tying up your dinghy where it's safe and having a wander around you'll like it if you're provisioning in Yalikavak then the macro center has a really great range of food but uh, it's certainly not going to be very budget friendly. We did shop for some things in there and uh, well, we're lucky we got out without having to take out a mortgage. But really, really excellent food. This town is big enough to support several supermarkets. There are the usual BIM and the A101 and Migros, as well as the Macro and also a Carrefour Gourmet, which uh, is a place that we also went, which has a great range of stuff. While we're here, we thought we'd check out the uh, marina and quite tight security to get in. Hess code, obviously, um, but also there's a uh, x-ray machine for your bags and hammer. So you would feel that your boat was secure if you had it here? Definitely. <laughs> Unless the robber's got a Hess code and is not carrying anything that might be lock-picking <laughs> material. That's true. You know which part of town you're in when you see shops like Louis Vuitton and Rolls Royce dealership in the marina. Kissing her pirates! <laughs> We're going to get some fuel now. We are. We're leaving uh, Yalakavak today and heading further, well, an hour north and then uh, two hours east. We've been here for nearly a week. Yeah. And uh, that's a long time in one spot. Yeah. So fuel, pump out, and head north. Yeah. Despite the increasing gust of wind from the north. Yeah. It's only an hour north, and then the rest of it's east. Yeah. Let's crack on. So that was 111.85 litres of diesel. Once again, you know, our calculations on our hourly uh, consumption were overestimated, which is good. 
that means we're, uh, we've always got more in the tank than we think we have, so this is good. Uh, now we're just waiting for the Yalakovac Marina guys to come and do the pump out because the fuel guy and the marina are totally separate entities. Um, so apparently the marina guys have got to do the pump out thingy. So, good. If you want to check that your GPS is spot on, do something like this. We are definitely in that slot. <laughs> Cells giving us an extra knot of speed over the ground. It's a fish farm over there. There's actually quite a few. We're going to this island here. And we're about half an hour away. fishing net there. It's quite interesting to see these because these are actually look like they're really being worked whereas a lot of the other ones that we've shown you before seem to be just more static sitting there but there's a lot of activity going on around this one. We are at Sale Adessa, which is a little island. Yeah, not even marked on some of the uh, Anchorage uh, websites. Mm -hmm. uh, it is marked on our chart, so we thought we'd stop here. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's pretty good. Um, it's kind of well protected. I mean, right now it's early morning and it's flat as a pancake. But once that Meltemi picks up in the afternoon, the shape of the land here funnels in the wind in an odd way and so we do get quite a bit of uh, large waves coming in from the south mm. pretty much mm. or southwest even though it's a north northwest wind blowing yeah yeah but um, even so it's not been rolling it's not been uncomfortable it's been a little bit there's been movement it is a very very yeah. busy spot the channel uh, has okay. a lot of boats going up and down it and so eventually you do get their wake coming in yeah. uh, this particular anchorage is popular to say the least lots of day trip I mean it's the middle of summer so you know I suppose you can expect that but they do like to play music very loud <laughs> and yeah. as an ex-DJ I can tell you it is out of order <laughs> he's just a grumpy old man now isn't he <laughs> no I mean stupidly loud yeah we're anchored in nine metres of sand here. The water's really clear. There are some small patches of weed, but hardly anything to be concerned about. One of the kind of interesting things about this little island is that there are about five or six abandoned villas that are just um, on the bay here. And um, we thought that we might go and have a look at them this morning. Yeah, might do. maybe, maybe, or maybe when we come back, we yeah. kind of we've been here for what three days, three nights, three nights, and we're sort of like eager to move on actually. Yeah. Um, so we may come back here on the way back 
and it's quite possible it might not be as busy because it will be later in the season. It's a place that's worth coming to because it's, it's slightly out of the way and it's certainly not as busy as some of the other anchorages that we've been to that are along the popular route. So we're going to get the dinghy up now and we'll just have another look at a couple of options where we're going to go today and uh, we'll see you when we're on the move. into the anchor locker but I didn't see it coming loose because it was directly under the chain as it was coming up. Easy fix. Around that promontory there is a little fishing town and it's got a Migros jet and quite a few restaurants there. There are also quite a few uh, hotels along the inlet to the bay so if you are anchored anywhere around here you can get provisions. As we leave the abandoned villas at Saleh Odessa on this little island if anybody knows why they were abandoned we'd be really interested to find out just tell us in the comments below. That's fish oil on the water and as we come round to this bay here, there's a really strong smell. It's pretty powerful. It's just hard to describe. It's not kind of really fishy, but it's just a horrible stench. Oh, I know what it is. If you stuck your head in um, a jar of fish food flakes, <laughs> that's the smell. Times ten. <laughs> Found out the fish farm culprit is just there. <laughs> oh. Yep, definitely. <laughs> He's the originator of the smell. So this is our uh, Plan A anchorage and uh, on the chart there's plenty of fish farms and we can actually see a couple of them um, but we don't know how you know, whether that one is actually truly there. So we're just going to poke our nose in and have a look-see. Yeah, because they seem to move them around, don't they? They do, yeah. This water is so clear. We're in five meters, is that right Baz? Yeah. And we can see our anchor. So it's dug into sand. It looks as if, see that darker patch there? It looks that like that might be a rocky bed. I'm not sure, because it did drag for a little while. Yeah, you can see the line in. where yeah, it, it came and dragged and then it finally found what it wanted. Yeah, yeah. So we pulled back. And now she's come back to sit on her anchor, which she likes to do. But you can, you can see the chain. So clear. Such a lovely bay. Like, approaching it, it just looked like a big flat nothingness. But as we came further in, 
Um, it's just got potential for walks and swimming. Oh, there's an old building over there. We passed three or four little um, fishing houses uh, where I think local fishermen live. But apart from that, it's absolutely still and quiet and peaceful and, as I said, gorgeous. Can't wait to get in the water. Our den is Koyu. Quite surprising. The approach, you think, hmm, that looks sketchy, doesn't look like much. Too many fish farms. <laughs> there is that. Um, but then if you actually take the time to stick your nose in and have a proper look, mm. it is spot on. Mm. Um, probably only enough room for us, um, but I don't think this is going to be a popular place. Not, no, there won't be any tourist day tripper boats here. And um, it's not marked as a, an anchorage anyway, so mm. people are not likely to be looking for it. Mm. It's really lovely. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of the place that people like us like to find. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, um, learned about this place from Kev and Dee on Sailing Kestrel. Yeah, thank you. Yes, good find, guys. Yes. Let's not tell anyone where it is. <laughs> so uh, let's go to land and fly the drone. Can yeah. We, can we? Can we? Can yes, we? Yes. Yes. We can go and do that. Yay! Oh, by the way. Um, I found this in the anchor locker. I was a bit concerned about it because it just suddenly dropped in when I was bringing up the anchor this morning. And I found out where it's come from. Just at the front, there's a sort of little plastic plate that's got four bolts and nuts holding it together. And it's come out of there. So it's nothing majorly important. I'll find a knot for it unless we can find the one that's in the anchor locker. Yeah. And uh, put some Loctite on it and check the others while I'm in there. Next week on Sailing ABC, we fly the drone and we head further north along the Turkish coast to Didim. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. It really helps us out more than you can imagine. And if you're not already a subscriber, click the subscribe button. We'd appreciate that.